Thank you, Lord. Do you ever remember playing hide and seek? You count to 10 or 100, whichever the case may be, and then you'd yell out, Ready or not, here I come. And I thought about that this week. Well, in fact, it last a little while. Jesus is about to say, Ready or not, here I come. Ready or not, church, here he comes. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. I believe Jesus is coming back to the earth because not only because he said so, but he gave us signs in which those things would be coming to pass. Coming in the sky and the clouds of glory. And as I said earlier, I've been feeling this way for, for uh, listen, I've been, I've been preaching just like all preachers prior to me that Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. I know that. I know that. And I know that there is a society that keeps on saying, well, you keep talking about it, but where is he? Where is he? He's holding out for you to give you an opportunity to know him and be ready. That's the only thing I believe that's really holding him back. Because everything else is being fulfilled. And as I show you some things today, things that already are evident, things that you already know or have already heard, show you things today that were unlike 40 years ago or 50 years ago all that time we're living in that day when these things that Jesus talks about is literally being complete fulfilled I was reading in Colossians uh, the uh, second chapter I mean the 34th chapter uh, I love I love reading the, the stories of, of uh, and the incidences, uh, the characters of those who lived the, the truth in the days of the Old Testament. And uh, Josiah was a king at this time in chapter 34 of Second Chronicles. He was the king and he was doing a good job because he did that which was right in the sight of God. He was tearing down those idol worshipers, their altars. Their images, taking them down and building up the kingdom of God in the hearts and minds of the people and the temple, doing that which was right in the sight of God. But then there was a prophet who came with a hidden word of the Lord. And as he read that, he said, I've got to take this to the king and let him see this. And so he came before the king. Josiah and begin to ring, read what judgment would be coming upon the world. And Josiah ripped his clothes. He fell to his knees, repenting. Oh God, we have failed you. Now he had done the best he could. He was living right in the eyes of God. But that which was around him was not, even though he tried to make changes. But the judgment of the Lord was going to come. And he, in repentance, bowed before God. And God spoke to him through the prophet and said, Josiah, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to deliver you. I am, yes, going to bring devastation upon the land and all of its inhabitants. They'll see the fullness of my wrath. But you, Josiah, will not. And verse 34, he says, uh, 28 <clears throat> of chapter 34, I will gather you to my fathers, and I shall, and you shall, you shall die. In other words, you will depart this earth in peace. Not in trouble, but in peace. You will not see all the devastation that I will bring upon this place and upon its inhabitants. You won't see it. I sat back a little bit and I just began to think, wow, something's there. And the Holy Spirit said, here's what I want you to know. This very well could be the image of the rapture. 
tribulation is coming. The great tribulation. Of such that the world has never ever known, nor ever will. Josiah, you won't see it. Because I'm going to deliver you first. Then it shall come. He said, I am going to take my church. And I'm going to deliver them. They will not see it. They will not experience it. That's the feeling that I've got. That's the, 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 the hope also that I have. Because I believe there is a rapture. I believe there is not only the second coming of the Lord, but prior to that coming, I believe there is a rapture. So as you read that, you see, well, then thereafter, when we're taken out, what does take place? Now, I've been reading for the last couple of days, Revelation again. Revelation chapter 4 through 22. That's what you'll begin to see. It's not going to take a long time for these things to take place. Some of them will take place uh, uh, in, in tandem. But they will take place and you'll see the destruction that coming upon the land. In fact, next week, I want to show you just what is proven uh, of what just one asteroid hitting the coast, near the coast of California. I looked at that and I thought, wow, the power. And Jesus said, and the stars will fall from the sky Amen. up on the earth. And I'm thinking, if that's what one will do, what about a reigning of many? And you'll see that next week. But we're on the brink of the second coming of the Lord in light of everything I believe is happening in the world. Uh, it is going to get worse before it gets better for us. And, you know, sometimes you don't like to hear that. I know when I was, uh, having my heart surgery, uh, it was about like saying, it's going to get worse. I don't want to hear that before it gets better. Good, I'm going to hang on to the better. Have my hope for the better. And that's what gets you through anything, the hope that you got for the better that's coming. This world, you can look and say, hey, well, it's going to get better. Why, if we can just get President Trump back in there, man, we'd, 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 we'd be flying again. We'd be, we'd be happy again. The world would somehow or another feel godly again. But, no, sir, it's not going to get better. No matter who's in office, no matter the leadership around the world, it's not going to get better. That's awful to say, isn't it? Well, say, well, you talk about hope, you just stripped it all away from me. No, your hope is not in this world. Your hope is in nothing less but Jesus, His blood and righteousness. Hope in Him. Jesus said these words. Now, you feel looking, and uh, I don't know if you have these slides up, Gary. Put, put the first one up, if you would, please. We're living in the end time. Uh, and uh, second slide. That's about Joshua. I mean, Jeho uh, Josiah. Matthew 24 and 21 of Luke. Jesus speaks very strongly. How many of you believe Jesus knows what he's talking about? Amen. I mean, if there ever a prophet, he is the prophet of all prophets. He said, during the end time events, many things, many things will happen. For many will turn away from me and shall betray and hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Folks, be careful what you hear. Be careful what you, you see. Be careful what you read. Uh... uh I know they talk about fake news. It's true. It's true. I mean, I witnessed it my own self. I mean, I saw for my own self how that there was the facts, but this was their, their commentary, which was far from the facts. And I said, I, I, can't believe the, I can't believe that media anymore. I will not trust in what they've got to say. Especially about matters that pertain 
to the end time. Things that, are, are things that would, will affect the church, the spiritual world. I just won't listen to what they've got to say. Uh, say I've got my head buried in the sand if you want to, but uh, we, we turn from being for our, one, two, to nearly a six hour a day news people to zip. I it said, well, you don't know what's going on. Yeah, I do. I find out what's going on. Some people that watch the stuff tell me what's going on, and I weigh it out then. Anyway, we do catch it here and there, and we do read things that are really in the news that are important. Be careful what you hear. Be careful what you see, and weigh it out according to what the Word says, according to the Spirit. This is the Spirit, the truth. Try the spirits and see whether they be of God or not. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. We were talking last night about people that were not just killing people at random, but killing their own family and being cold-hearted about it. The, wax, the, 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 the love of many wax cold. Now you do hear that here, here a bit in the media. You do hear of people that are just randomly shooting people just because it's sport. Know this too, that if the world hated Jesus, Jesus said, they'll hate you too. The Bible says then, as the gospel of this kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. I used to think every single person in this world will get to hear the gospel. But he said, no, every nation, every nation shall hear, be exposed. When every nation is exposed to the gospel, then count the end comes. I don't think you can go too many, I don't think you can go to one nation that the internet's not there somewhere. Or a television broadcast somewhere. Or a radio signal somewhere. I don't think there is a place in this world that you can hide from any of those forms of communication. They're all there. Therefore, we're living in a day which, this is, remember, I told you 50, 60 years ago, this, this wouldn't have been. I mean, we would depend upon missionaries to go to every nation and minister the gospel. But now we don't have to. We've got a signal that can go in just an instant. That's why I believe when the word says, and every eye shall see him. It's because there'll be a lot of, because this is going to take place in the Israel area. So how is every eye going to see him? There'll be a lot of cameras out there. You say, well, now that's kind of uh, far-fetched. No, I see a lot of things around the world, and I don't have to be there to see it. So every nation now is exposed to the gospel. Then Jesus gave this warning to know when the last days are coming, that things that are coming on this earth, not only they will be horrifying. He said, take heed, take heed, no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And shall deceive many. We're surrounded by false religions. And the false religions used to be in other countries. But now they are all around us. Your neighbor could have a false god in their own house. And worship in some kind of fashion this god. In our country, our nation, no longer is the Bible welcomed in schools and in government places. You shut out the truth, you shut out this truth, and it opens the door for all kinds of other mess coming in. Our children's minds, uh, uh, I know that uh, my daughter's uh, boys, are, they're in the, the early ages of school, and it's, it's something how that 
there is, uh, they're on the verge of mind-bending things. And they, they, they don't have the truth being spoken to them because it's against the law for a teacher to talk about the Bible to the class. Only if you're asked. I remember years ago, I was told that. They said, uh, I was going into a second grade, and I was going to substitute. And I was already told by the principal, I know you're a preacher, but you can't get in there and preach the word. You can't get in there and say one word about the Bible or God. I said, huh? She said, unless you're asked. Now, if you're asked, you can answer a question. Okay. So I go in there, and the first thing they ask me, hey, Mr. Newton, what do you do? I said, I preach the gospel. Oh, what? Tell me, what's that? Well, good. I had me a couple of hours just talking about Jesus to those co because they asked me. But that's the society we're living in. It's going to get to the place where you can't even do that. Ask your mom. Ask your dad. Bad news about asking them, they don't know God either. Blind leading the blind. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. Need I mention Russia, China, who coming against Ukraine? That's happening right now. And I believe it's a test war. It's a test war. It's a test war such as, uh, you know how you put a little chip on your shoulder and you tell somebody, knock the chip off. Just, just, just knock the chip off. All right? That's a test. That's a test. And if they knock it off, you'd say, wait a minute. Do it again. That's our nation. That's America today. They've knocked the chip off the shoulder, and we're reaching down and say, "Do that again." We won't. We won't do business with you anymore. We'll. We'll. Uh, we'll. We'll. Uh, because we won't do business with you, you won't have the money that's needed to run your country. That, that kind of stuff. Well, that, that's, that, doesn't, that doesn't scare the enemy. So Ukraine is a test war because they say, America is not doing anything about this. They're scared. They're backing off. We can do whatever we want to. So China and Russia joins, as would be prophesied, join together. And there'll be a third one that'll, like Iran, that'll join with them. And when they do, look out. It'll be world control. It'll be a, yeah, a one-world government, which we're headed towards that, for sure. But it'll be a one-world government, but our, our leaders won't be involved in it. In fact, in prophecy, America is not even mentioned. So will we even be in existence? So you'll hear wars and rumors of wars, nations rising against the nation. And then there'll be famine. You notice how hard it is to get eggs anymore, and if you do, how much they are? We think, well, we've got a, we've got a multitude of food. Well, you, what was it back in COVID, during the COVID days? Out of toilet paper? Can't find any. In just a minute. They could say it snowed, by the way, somebody said it snowed here. Uh, in the Carolinas or early this morning. Mentioned snow in the south. Bread and milk's off the shelf. <laughs> you say, how could it go so fast? It was, the, 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 the cooler was full. The shelf was full. And they're gone. Folks, and famine. You think, well, you know, it, it'll dwindle. It'll, it'll, it'll slowly come upon us. No. And you think, well, the food will just dwindle. No, it won't. It'll be gone. It'll be gone. People will fight over a loaf of bread. They'll fight over what's on that shelf. And then you walk in and say, well, you know, I thought I'd let the crowd die down. I'll go in and buy me something. You're not going to have anything to buy. And that's not in a couple of weeks' time. That's in just a matter of an hour. It could be gone. Gone, just like that. Famine. Famine in the land. We're living there. 
And then there'll be an epidemic. The Bible says epidemic. If it translated pandemic worldwide. And what did we have not long ago? The COVID-19. And then there'll be earthquakes in different places. Unusual places. Tens of thousands of, of, of people killed in countries. I just looked up last night uh, in, uh, in Turkey. Do you know that there is over 47,000 people killed in the last little bit because of the earthquake that hit there? Earthquakes in different places. Two, I think it was about two years ago, I was sitting on a Sunday morning, and all of a sudden I heard like a great big truck or a limb, which I thought a limb had fallen on my house. And I went outside to look and I didn't see any debris. And I called my daughter. I said, did you feel that? She said, I sure did. I've come out and looked also. And then we discovered an earthquake had hit. And we'd never felt one, to my knowledge, in Concord. But there it was. And it was, it was sizable, not damaged, but it was certainly sizable. You could feel, feel like a, a gigantic truck had come down and crashed into one of the trees in your yard. Matthew 24, 4 through 14. Then shall be great tribulation such as was never since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor even shall be. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of, distress of nations with perplexities and the seas and the waves roaring. You'd say, well, now that's, that's a long way away. I, that, that would, if something happened here in the States, uh, it wouldn't be all that bad. It would be localized. I want you to see a video. Yellowstone Park. You know the old, old faithful that's there? Well, look what would happen if, if, if old faithful was to give way. And, and they're predicting that it certainly will. If it doesn't come up. Since 2004, scientists have observed the ground above the Yellowstone caldera bulge 10 inches as the magma pocket expands below. These volcanic systems, they're big and they do what they do on a huge scale when they want to do them. And at this point in time, humans don't have a really obvious way of changing the game. With the Yellowstone supervolcano on a hair trigger, global disaster may be close at hand. If the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt, just imagine one giant cloud, and not dissipating, not moving on, not breaking up nearly so easily as normal clouds do. Imagine also everyone under that cloud having trouble breathing because of the, the ash and the particulate matter that is flying out. This particulate matter, incredibly fine particles, would ultimately settle out as this dust around the world. Breathing it would be horrible. People could literally die from breathing it. A massive volcanic eruption is going to be similar to a nuclear winter. It will block enough sunlight to change the weather patterns globally. The aftermath of a super eruption would ultimately create a desolate, uninhabitable planet. I feel comfortable saying if a supervolcano went off, Yellowstone for instance, it would be the end of the world as we know it. And with the risk of this world end... There it is. There was more of it. I was watching the whole thing. Very interesting. And, and this is one major eruption in Yellowstone which changes the course of the entire world to bring devastation, which is the end. That's just one. And we say, well, that's a, that's a ways off. No, the Bible is telling us, no, it's not a ways off. Don't sit back and take your ease and think, well, you know, it, it'll happen to another generation. No, it won't. The Word says these words, and Jesus said it. This generation shall not pass away till all of it is fulfilled. Say, yeah, but he was talking to the disciples then. No, he was not saying, disciples, this generation that we're living in right now. No, the reference is 
the generation that begins to see these things happen will not perish until all of it is fulfilled. So we're living in that generation because it's already started to happen. And then uh, they shall de deliver you. Oh, actually, uh, men's hearts failing them for fear of looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. This morning and yesterday morning, in fact, my devotions every single morning, I sit back and I think about the coming of the Lord. And what would happen and what does happen prior to what we as a church are going to suffer prior to and the what ifs. And then many will turn from me and shall betray and hate one another. And you look at what's happening around the world of people hating one another. No regard for life. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And shall you be, because you'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. He's talking now to the church. You will be hated by the nations. You will be hated. And the leadership will try to come against you every way they possibly can. To control you every which way they can. And I believe the only reason why uh, the mark of the beast is not working right now <clears throat> is because a lot in the church world especially will not succumb to their orders. In fact, I'll tell you, uh, I know a lot of people got the vaccine. We opted not to. Uh, no condemnation one way or the other. But they were trying to make it mandatory. You won't be able to go certain places. You won't be able to go out in public places. If you don't have this vaccine, you won't be able to go on a cruise anymore. You won't be able to enjoy all the things that people that have the vaccine got. And I look at that and say, that's a threat. That's, that's telling me I better succumb to what they want. I better succumb to what they want. And because many people said no, and they couldn't make them, they're backing off and saying, the mark of the beast will not work right now. But it's coming. Because when these things and devastations begin to take place, then we'll be able to control them a whole lot more than what COVID-19 did. Can you catch what I'm saying there? Again, let me repeat. I'm glad for those that got the vaccine. Please don't condemn me because I did not. But the thing is, the point I'm trying to make is, our government was trying to make things mandatory. The mark of the beast is going to be the same thing. It's going to be put out there as volunteer. But if you don't, you won't eat. You won't have a place to stay. You will be desolate. Because all of it will be taken from you if you don't take this mark. Talk more about that next week. The world, I believe, will readily receive whatever. Um, well, all right, here's what the... Second Thessalonians 2, 7. For the lawlessness is already at work. It's working secretly. And it will remain secret until the one who is hindering it is taken out. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. Now, 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 who is the one hindering? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit living? In us. And therefore, when that Holy Spirit is removed... And God's not going to take the Holy Spirit from us. So he removes all the temples of the Holy Spirit. And then they can rule and reign because there's no more hindrances. No more pushback. No more telling people you can't. No more telling people anything because the hinderer is gone. Which really speaks to me, which a lot of, a lot of theologians don't put it that way, but I look at it and say, that's got to be a rapture to me. 
that we be taken away and then the Antichrist is revealed. Then there is so-called miraculous powers coming from this man of great peace for three and a half years. And oh, lo and behold, thereafter. For the Lord, I believe himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord. And so shall we ever be with him. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. That's not just something spoken at funerals. That is the speaking of the fact of Jesus is coming in the clouds, not to the earth. Coming in the clouds of great glory and calling his people up. That to me, that to me is a rapture. That is a rapture. And then, that which comes upon the earth. What's coming, what is here, what is coming even more so? Peter and Paul said it this way. In the last days, men shall be lovers of self and lovers of money, proud, disobedient to parents, unthankful, without natural affections, unloving, un, uh, unforgiving, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. In the last days, there'll be scoffers walking about in their own lust. And boy, aren't we seeing that today? Wow, are we not seeing that today? You know, you can't, you can't, you can't even today even watch a commercial that you don't have two men or two women expressing unnatural affections for one another. And we're living that, and you can't say one thing about it. Government says you do, you get prison. It's in our schools. It's in Cabarrus County schools. Trust me, it's there. Yeah. It's, it, it, we're... And, and people will say, where is his coming? Where are the signs of his coming? Here. Open up your eyes and see. We are living there. We are there. We're seeing more today than we've ever seen before. And many shall say, well, where, where is his coming? Second Peter 3, verse 3 and 5. Where is his coming? Since our fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. No, they're not continuing the way they were. They're willingly ignorant. All of this is taking place right now. And Jesus was saying, before he comes to the earth again, he said, Again, I tell you a parable. Behold a fig tree and all the trees. When now the shoot, they shoot forth, you see and you know in your own self that summer is coming. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away until it's all fulfilled. And the rapture, I believe, takes place. Now, can we predict the coming of the Lord? Yeah, I can. So, uh -oh, false prophet. When the church is raptured, count seven years and he's coming that's what the word says so when the rapture takes place then count down seven years and you'll know when the coming of the Lord is I I I, I knew this was going to be a, a what I believe a pivotal message in our life our church world, our church, and the church world in general. Uh, but I'm doing my best to search out and seek the truth to give you. Because, well, I'm one thing, I'm responsible for you. I'm responsible to give you the facts, the word, and to the best of my ability and knowledge, and in the spirit, I'll do just that. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready? When can the rapture take place? I want to show you something next week that might astound you. Hey, listen, if you know, if you've got anybody you know that doesn't know the Lord or who has questions about the end time, make sure they're here next week if the Lord tarries. Bring them here next week. I've got some things to show them, a demonstration that will shock you. 
and a message that is basically entired, uh, entitled, What if I'm wrong about the rapture? What then? What should I expect if there is no rapture? Because I want to cover both grounds. Are you ready? Are you ready?